The Board of Trustees of the Harris County Department of Education is now convened in a regular board meeting on Wednesday, September 18th, 2024 in room 401 at 6300 Irvington Boulevard, Texas at 1.01 p.m. I wish to extend a warm welcome to everyone present at this meeting of the Board of Trustees. As trustees, we are here to set goals, listen to reports from the superintendent, approve budgets, contracts, personnel appointments, and set policy for the district. It is not the role of the board to make day-to-day -day operational decisions. The management and day-to-day -day operations of the department are the responsibility of the superintendent. We have policies and procedures in place to resolve concerns and issues. This is a public meeting of the board of trustees, not a meeting of the public. Prior to this meeting, board members received information related to items on today's agenda. Agenda items will not necessarily be handled in the order listed on the notice. The meeting is open to all who wish to attend and hear the matters discussed. During the course of this meeting, the board may determine that a closed session is necessary. In that event, the board will meet in closed session to consider matters duly posted for this meeting as permitted by section 551.071 to 551.084, inclusive of the Texas Government Code. I respectfully ask that you please refrain from talking while others are speaking and that cell phones are turned off or in silent mode. Thank you for taking time today to join us and for your interest in the Harris County Department of Education. So we will start with our invocation by, um, we'll have Dr. Margaret Patton um, for the invocation, followed by Pledge of Allegiance of the U.S. flag and the Texas flag by Catal Catalina Ramos. Good afternoon, HCD trustees and Superintendent Colbert. You have been a strong support system for the and advocates for the school's division. You show up for us in many ways, and we want to let you know that we really appreciate you. So in your honor today, we read Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Please join me in a short prayer. Father, thank you for choosing this team for this time. Cover this leadership team, all the HCD divisions and their staff, and Mr. Colbert's favorite, the school's division. Continue to direct our path, order our steps, and grant us the wisdom to show up every day to support our students and staff in the way that is pleasing and purposed by you. Father, as we strengthen our relationship with local and state agencies, show them the heart of our division and have them recognize our value. And for our students, let us be the enduring impact in their critical areas of need. We ask that you continue to stand in the gap as they are on their journey to conquering the world and finding their place. Please go where we cannot, protect when we cannot, give strength that we cannot, and bring them safety in all they do. Thank you, Father, for all your continued blessings. In your glorious name we pray, amen. So we can continue with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, under God, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. We don't have anyone signed up for open forum, so we will move to the consider, uh, consideration, approval of certification of the anticipated tax collection rate, the anticipated debt collection rate for excess debt collections, calculation of the no new revenue rate and voter approved rates by the Harris County Tax Assessor slash Collector, 2024 certified property values and the submission of the no new revenue tax rate and voter approval tax rate using the certified estimate of taxable value. value and a plan to adopt a rate of 0 .004799 for tax year 2024 in accordance with the Truth and Taxation Laws codified in Chapter 26 of the Texas Tax Code as amended by the 88th Legislature. 
Hello, Dr. Mesqua. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I believe you can see the presentation on September 18 um, for 24-25. The property value growth uh, went from 639 million billion, I'm sorry, to 665 billion. And you see the progression and the increases over the last few years. The tax rates in 2013 has come down, and as you can see it depicted in the uh, in this uh, in this slide, it's been a decade plus of uh, the decreases in the tax rate, or a 31 percent decline, or four dollars and 55 cents decline in the tax rate since 2013 to to, uh, to since uh, fiscal year 2013 to fiscal year 2025, and so the proposal is uh, to uh, reduce it to 0 0.004799 which is in effect 31% from 2013. In terms of the uh, tax rates, we're currently at 48.0048 for the last year. The non year revenue rate is at 0 0.0048. The voter approved rate uh, is 0 0.005259, which means you could potentially go all the way to that and not uh, trigger an election. And then uh, the recommended rate is 0 0.004799. <clears throat> in the next slide, you see that the increases in the values, which is inversely, uh, uh, the tax rate has been coming down since 2013 and, and 14. Uh, next slide is the calculation of the rate that basically gives us the revenue needed for the budget. And uh, because the rate does not um, exceed the non new revenue rate, um, you can uh, basically at this point in time uh, move to approve a plan to adopt a tax rate which is lower than the current uh, non-new revenue rate and it will not require the public hearing, not it will require a, a majority vote. I'm, I'm sorry, a super majority vote. The is to uh, um, uh, uh, adopt a plan to uh, adopt a rate of 0 0.004799, which means we would place a notice in the newspaper and in our website, and then uh, you will approve the officially the tax rate at the October board meeting. Uh, what questions do you have at this point in time? Um, I do not see any questions at this time. Thank you. Okay, so uh, oh, just for the consider to uh, consider approval. Okay, all right. Uh, do I have a motion to consider approval? So, motion by Trustee McGee, seconded by Trustee Cantu. All in favor? Um, motion passes. Seven zero. All right, so then um, thank you very much. And then we'll move, thank on, you. We'll move on to uh, reports and presentations. So next we have Employee of the Month with uh, Dr. Tyrone Sylvester. Madam President, Board of Trustees, Superintendent Colbert. Today I have the honor of introducing you to a key member of the Human Resources team Ms. Ashley Barker, the September 2, 2024 Employee of the Month. It is a pleasure for me to showcase one of our HR employees as our work is important, but rarely public. Ashley is SCDE's HR Composition Analyst, assuming this role in April. In this capacity, she works with the business office to ensure employees receive their co correct pay and any changes to deductions are made accurately and in a timely manner. Ashley takes on the responsibility of making sure everything is set up, ready for each pay period so no employee will be docked or paid incorrectly, which at times requires she work from home or during holidays, Assistant Director of HR Patty Menard said in her nomination. She goes beyond her regular duties by scheduling her absences around payroll processing periods because she cares about each employee. But her value 
to the team surpasses her work experience and her performance. Menard credited Ashley with helping to establish the amazing culture HCDE is known for. Prior to working with the financials, Ashley was an HR generalist who planned many employee morale events, including the return of the chili cook-off last year and the first picnic in the parking lot. Ashley was at the forefront of our culture as well as employee emotional and financial well-being, Ms. Menard explained in her nomination. I don't think people recognize her enough for that. But it's not just event planning that Ashley excels in. Her colleagues say, say she's always willing to go the extra mile, and it's, she's the go-to person for employee data, reports, and records. Ashley's dedication was most recently seen during Hurricane Barrel when she braved the heat and along with a handful of other ACD employees came into the office to ensure staff were paid on time. Our communications division has put together a short video highlighting Ashley's contribution to ACDE. My name is Ashley Parker and I'm the compensation analyst for HR. So I do all the money. Part of my job that people don't understand is that we touch everybody. You could name an employee and I could tell you who they are and where they work because I see it so much. I've been here a quarter of a century and I've worked with Ashley for 17 years. A lot of people at HCDE don't know Ashley. What she does every day impacts every single one of us. She's one of those people who's overly patient and compassionate, so when people don't understand their pay, she'll work with them to explain it until they understand it. Started here at 28, trying to finish my degree. You know, Natasha pulled me aside and was like, hey, you know, instead of being a teacher, what, what, how about we hire the teachers? <laughs> so I'm like, okay, okay, okay. She was pivotal for years. Um, working with facilities, planning and setting up and making sure that all our events went smoothly. We had enough food, we had enough decorations, and Ashley was at the forefront and I don't think people really recognized her enough for that. So Patty is my direct boss. She's always pushed me to be a better person. She got her master's as well and she's like, now it's your turn. I don't really have any hobbies, but like my children keep me busy. Even though the two oldest ones are adults, <laughs> they need me more than they did when they were little. And of course, shopping is probably my hobby. Retail therapy. Miss Ashley is a person who is going to do whatever is necessary for Harris kind of from the to be successful. And she, she comes aboard and whatever you ask of her, she willingly does it. And that's just a skill and a willingness that you, you know you don't see in every person and that's that's what makes her special. Ashley's an unsung hero. When the building was closed because of the electricity, Ashley was here making sure that everybody was set up properly and that everybody would receive their pay. So she is very selfless. I think the lady wears a cape. You know, I think there's a there's a hidden cape somewhere in her office when she closes the door, she puts her cape on and she flies around the office and she does all this stuff. You know, I mean, it, it just she, she's just remarkable in that way. People always say, um, your hands are full and I say, no, you should see my heart. Our HR team members, they, they do a lot of great things for the organization. We have a great team down there and for one of our team members to be recognized uh, in this way, it, it's absolutely an, an honor. You know, they're not seeking uh, the camera, they're not seeking the spotlight. They're not seeking <laughs> to be employees of the month. They're just, they're just seeking to be good people. Please join me in celebrating Miss Ashley Barker, our September 2024 Employee of the Month.
Oh. Are the, are the, yeah, we'd just like to recognize her parents. So, hello. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. All right, so then we're going to go ahead and move on to the superintendent's monthly report. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Ashley, before you leave, I'd just like to uh, personally thank you, and I'm going to speak for everyone, for ensuring that we got paid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's part Green Beret. She just traveled through all the water and wind and everything and make sure we got paid. So thank you so much for that. Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> all right, Madam President, I have uh, three items to update everyone on. First, um, Dr. Omesqua isn't here today, so it's my privilege and honor to recognize the fact that we are the recipient of another Transparency Star Award. Uh, the trophy case is getting full at this point. You know, we've gotten a number of these. This is for Open Government and Compliance uh, Star. And I wanted to recognize our business office and uh, purchasing for being able to win this award. So thank you to them for that. So next, you know, I've been working with comms for some time. If y'all look to the folder, you should have one on your left or right. Um, comms has done an excellent job of putting together some um, programs to kind of articulate some of the things that we do. This is for our foundation program. Uh, we have one on our cost savings report, which is very trans part of our transparency award. But on your right hand side, it's the five main divisions, the pillars that we stand by with Harris County Department of Ed, where uh, the first one we'll talk a little bit about what HCD is. This is the quad fold for that. Next, you'll have therapy services, special schools, Head Start, Case for Kids, and ultimately adult education. Uh, these are materials that we like to hand out to people when they're inquisitive about what exactly it is that we do as an organization. Uh, we take pride in the fact that every photo that you will see in there is a, of a real person and not a fake person. Uh, we don't do fake pictures at HCD. We have beautiful students that we like to promote all the time, so we like to keep them in it. Uh, we will be completing one for choice, I think, in the next few months here. And so our goal is to be able to have programs and uh, uh, items like this to pass out to anybody that's curious about Harris County Department of Ed. Finally, this month is a special month. It is Hispanic Heritage Month, and I would call up Danielle Clark to introduce the video celebrating this month. Thank you, Mr. Colbert, members of the board. Throughout the year we, here at HCDE, we recognize um, the contributions of various cultures to our society and our community, and we join the nation in doing that. So today, we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, which is September 15th to October 15th. And so Communications put together um, a video today, and it's going to talk about the history of the celebration and also give you um, a peek into the diverse cultures here in the HCDE family. Have you ever thought about how bland and boring our world would be without the varied ethnicities and cultures we have in our society? More than 50 years ago, our government implemented an annual celebration to honor and recognize the many contributions the Hispanic and Latino people have made to advance and better our society. Whether it is music, art, literature, technology, sports, or cuisine, all of these accomplishments are appreciated and provide a foundation for many achievements to come. Here at HCDE, we also recognize the lasting contributions of those trailblazers who came before. The diverse groups making up the Hispanic and Latino culture are just some of many strings woven into the tapestry of our global society. The HCDE tapestry is also woven from a diverse group of individuals who come together to better the lives of those we serve. Happy Hispanic Heritage Month! 
we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. We are HCDE. Somos HCDE. And with that, Madam President, that's all I have. Thank you very much. And so with that, we can move on to our annual division update. Um, Dr. Ned. Thank you, Madam President. Good afternoon, Board of Trustees. Mr. Colbert, uh, extended leadership team members. I am Dr. Charles Ned, and I am the Senior Director of Schools. And it is, an, it is indeed a pleasure for me to highlight Mr. Colbert's favorite division, the schools. <laughs> so I'll begin by asking members of the schools division central office staff to please stand and be recognized. This is a group that their fingerprints are all over our students and our staff and they never fade. Um, you know, we have Dr. Margaret Patton who leads the team as it pertains to curriculum. We have Ms. Nketchi Washington, that's our instructional coach. You can find her on any of our four campuses any day of the week. We have Ms. Michelle Rayson, that's our technical and compliance support officer. Uh, she works really well with our campuses to ensure, especially our AB campuses, to make sure that all things are in line. And we have Ms. Denise Alamos-Jones, she's my admin assistant. She's the front line for us here at Irvington, as well as Ms. Joanne Galindo and Ms. Catalina Ramos, who's our parent, and students, parent engagement liaison. So again, uh, it's our central office staff. They do a phenomenal job in supporting the work of our, our students and our teachers. So we really appreciate them. So as you know, school has been underway now for approximately three and a half weeks and our campus principals they're hard at work, you know, on campus here today, so they're unable to join us. But I'd like to recognize, you know, our campus principals. Um, you know, they are truly the face of the school's division and the work that they do each and every day with our students and with our districts, you know, it, it's above reproach in terms of the outcomes that they're able to achieve. Um, I'll start off with Ms. Love and Mr. Hutton. They're at our AB campuses, which, really houses some of our more challenging students, but it's amazing to see some of the outcomes that they are able to achieve with some of the kiddos that we serve. Ms. Love and Mr. Hutton are both gone into their second year as building principal here at HCDE. Uh, Ms. Godfrey, she's at Fortis Academy, and Ms. Waters, she's at High Point. They're both going into their fourth year as building principals. So leadership stability is extremely important in terms of being able to hit the marks and hit the goals that you, uh, that you hope to achieve. And so we really do believe that we have the right people in the right seats on the bus. Collectively, these leaders have over 100 years of educational experience. So that's, that's something that is valued and obviously rare, you know, in a fast moving occupation as education. All right, so again, you know, we've been in school now, this is the fourth week. And there's a lot of planning and preparation that went into ensuring that we got off to a great start. And so I, I don't want you to take my word for it. I'd like for you to see for yourselves. The joy and excitement in the building just so effective. And this morning, everybody came in with this, just eager to meet their students. It's gonna be a terrific year here at ABS West. We had extensive professional development, so we feel like our staff, they're adequately prepared to embrace the kiddos and get them off to a great start. It's exciting to see so many students in the building. It's exciting to see the smiles on the face of the staff.
Our staff is excited to receive their students so that we can begin changing the narrative, which is our theme for this upcoming school year. So again, we had a great first day. And that's one of the few times during the course of the year that I have an opportunity to visit all four campuses in one day. And that's quite a task in itself. But uh, the smiles on the kids' faces, uh, the excitement that the staff had to receive the students, you know, again, you know, we try to replay that each and every day, but the first day is like none other. So. In total, as it stands, uh, we provide services to 50 school districts, uh, 21 in county, 26 out of county, and three charter systems. So far, we have 533 contracts for student placement at our HCDE schools, and we currently have 310 students enrolled in HCDE schools. So just for a, a, just for a frame of reference, last year, we serve, we provide services to 820 students at our HCDE schools. And I highlighted the new districts that are new to HCDE, uh, they're highlighted. So we're, we're, we're pleased to bring those districts and those charter systems on board this year. So why do districts use us? You know, as noted on the slide, we offer specialized services to students with a variety of learning disabilities and other co-occurring disorders. We also provide services at a far lesser rate than school districts would be able to offer on their own to students. Not to mention that we're able to staff our classrooms with certified teachers, and many districts are struggling with that. We offer therapeutic services in buildings that are built for our students with whom we serve, plus we graduate our kiddos. You can see it, Mr. Cobras with one of our proud graduates mm -hmm. at ADS East. Um, and that's one of the things that ABS East, ABS West, we have graduation every year. Fortis, we graduate in excess of approximately five to six students each year. And these are students that districts have not really deemed. They've labeled them almost as dropouts and they go to Fortis and they graduate. So we're very proud of that. Uh, again, you know, the, the pictures of our New, new facilities, ABS East, High Point, the Century Room at ABS East as well. Uh, that could not be done without the support of the board. So we appreciate it and we thank you all for that. Uh, there are a variety of extended learning opportunities available for our students at each campus, you know, such as Special Olympics, Robotics, Chess, Culinary Arts, Equine, and much more. And we're constantly looking at ways in which we can connect with our students. So we're looking, always looking for things that we can bring in. Um, back to school, it seemed like just yesterday we were welcoming staff back and, you know, we had a very successful back to school kickoff in which exciting, engaging and relevant professional learning, you know, occurred and was provided to schools division staff. Uh, Eric Litwin, who is the author of the Pete the Cat series, he was our keynote speaker and, you know, he was able to reinforce the message uh, of our theme, which was linking literacy to life. And so we were very, very pleased with his presentation and how it connected, you know, to our theme. So you all have a commemorative t-shirt from the PD, you know, with an artist rendering a Pete the Cat on the back. So I hope you enjoy that. And the PD doesn't stop with the first couple of weeks of school. You know, we have ongoing professional learning that takes place at various times throughout the course of the year. Uh, our teachers are constantly in need of reinforcement, and obviously we want to make sure we equip them with the tools that they'll need in order to be successful in working with our student behaviors and to improve the quality of classroom instruction. But one of the more exciting things that I'd like to share with you is that we have really dove in head first with being able to grow our own and seeking pathways in which we can grow our own teachers. Um, we get a number of educators that come to us, or prospective educators, that have a bachelor's degree, but they're lacking the certification or they're lacking coursework. And so seeking pathways in which they can continue to work while earning that certification is something that, 
you know, I'd have to shout out Dr. Patton because she has been instrumental in working with Prairie View A&M University, as well as our Center for Educator Success in terms of being able to help identify and place some of our employees. Uh, to date, we have three teachers currently enrolled in the Prairie View A&M Teacher Residency Program. We have two more enrolled in the Center for Educator Success Program. We actually have one teacher that completed the CES program last year, and she's currently working at High Point East as a full-fledged certified classroom teacher. Um, we also have seven principal interns. So through the Prairie View A&M Leaders Program, we've identified staff that have done the, completed the necessary steps to become principal interns. So we really are serious about growing our own. Um, you know, thanks to these programs, in addition to the work of human resources, you know, we begin this school year with the fewest number of vacancies that we've had in years. So, you know, I appreciate the efforts of everyone that's involved in this. And as you can see from the pictures, I mean, it's just really the family environment in terms of being able to help support these individuals throughout the course of the year so that they can have success in their roles. We're very fortunate to have trustees and a superintendent that encourage us to promote the brand by presenting at conferences. We continue to seek out national platforms in which we can highlight the work that we're doing with other educators, uh, many of whom are truly fascinated by the service delivery and business model that we have, in addition to being very impressed with the results that we've obtained. And this is just some of the conferences that uh, our schools have presented at this year and in the coming months. Uh, there'll be a few presentations that's being done by High Point and Fortis at the National Alternative Education Association Conference in October. And Fortis will also present in October at the National Dropout Prevention Conference in New Orleans. So we're very proud of that as well to continue sharing our story. So in closing, we're very grateful for the support that we received from the team of eight as well as HCDE, its internal divisions. Uh, it truly does take a village to ensure that our students and staff have what's needed so they can thrive. So again, thank you. We appreciate each and every one of you for your service and for supporting schools division. What questions do you have? I'd just like to make a, a couple of statements first. Uh, kudos to you, Dr. Ned, and your crew for all that you do. Probably, you know, I say this all the time, one of the most significant services that Harris County Department of Ed provide are our four special schools. And um, it's what re really defines and separates us from all the other entities across the entire state of Texas. We take some of the most challenging students in the entire county and we've tried to identify the potential in them and help them actualize it. And so finding a staff, finding a curriculum, finding strategies to be able to work effectively with those students is a challenge all in itself. But then executing that stuff is also on a whole nother level. This year I had the ability to once again attend the, the professional development right at the beginning of the year. And I've been here for 10 years now and I would say it was probably the best one I've ever seen, uh, just in organization. Um, the depth of the training and expectations, which I think it spoke to compared to when I first got here. But the other thing that was impressionable on, uh, to me was the spirit behind the staff and how passionate they were and excited to get the year started. You know, when I first got here, not everybody was really dialed in to the actual instructional component of what our schools are supposed to do. It was more watching the students. Um, I would say there, our schools look nothing like that now. It looked nothing like that. Uh, my final comments would be is one of the challenges that I make to all of our programs when we build buildings is I tell them, don't let your building outperform you. Don't let your building be so much better than the program that's inside the building. You need to outperform your building. You need to chase it. And you know, this is a division where I can truly say that they've caught their building. And that's not an easy statement to make, but uh, I'm super proud of our campuses. I'm super proud of the eclectic group of professionals that we have that lead it. 
And I'm super proud of the culture that you've been able to cultivate, but to sustain. So kudos to you and your people. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do we have any other reports from board members? No? Okay. And any reports from committees? Okay, seeing none. Um, we'll move on to information on monthly financial reports. So is Dr. Okay. Dr. Musquo. He is, there you are, coming in. There you are. Hello. Hello. Um, Give me a second, let me just uh, bring up the highlights and uh, we get started. All right. All month of the year. Again, uh, please note that this is uh, preliminary because we are still doing uh, audit adjustments for the end of the year. So these financial highlights are um, have information as of August 31st, but we're still doing audit adjustments for accruals for the end of the year. Um, we're proud to say that we have now a four stars, as you can see the four star uh, listed there for our transparencies, and all the information is posted on our website. The uh, balance sheet is $38,431,032 for total assets, liabilities of $2,664,848. Um, and uh, our equity is thirty-five million two hundred thirty-nine thousand six thirty-two. Uh, our fund balance um, at the end of the preliminary thirty-five million two hundred thirty-nine thousand six fifty-two. Keep in mind that this number is going to change because we need to do accruals for the end of the year, so that's going to come down. Excuse me a little bit, so don't uh, um, don't hold that uh, too much. Just to know that this is preliminary. Seven <clears throat> percent on fund balance to uh, expenditure ratio, very similar to where we were last year at twenty nine percent. Working capital ratio holding strong at thirty five million versus twenty six million last year. Our um, unassigned fund balance at forty six percent versus sixty eight percent at the same time last year. Again, this is preliminary because we're we're still waiting for uh, the audit adjustments for the year. And then our, our, our debt payments are going to be um, at 5.1% versus 7% uh, from a year ago. Our uh, tax revenue at 21%. And uh, this is an indication that we have other revenue sources other than taxes that supplement our budget. And so you see the, the drop from 27% to about 21% from, from a year ago. Our indirect cost ratio holding out about close to 3%, um, similar to last year at 4%. Our for service re revenue um, holding strong at 17.9% uh, versus last year at 19%, and an increase in the growth ratio uh, at 17.4% versus 13 for last year. And this is an indication that you have more contracts coming uh, to the board and have been approved that basically uh, expands our, our revenue uh, our platform for, for the budget. $6,532. We don't have any amendments at this time. <clears throat> our revenues are holding up at 95% year to date. Again, we're still uh, accruing some revenues. Uh, and year to date, we're at 77% uh, versus for all funds. In terms of expenditures, uh, while we were at 95% in the revenues, we are at 85% on the expenditures, and that's going to allow us to increase our fund balance uh, a little bit. And you will see that uh, when we do, do the presentation of the audit in the, in the January board meeting. In terms of uh, COVID uh, cumulative disaster relief, uh, we still have 107,971, which we're going to use in the, by December once uh, once we uh, finalize. Uh, the payments for uh, for for our staff. 
uh, donations uh, for the year to date. We've had 211,782 in terms of uh, in kind, cash of 37,262, uh, total of $249,044. And primarily, we were, uh, uh, donations were made for procurement services and the IPAS, which we had last uh, Friday. We got over 125 uh, participants uh, from uh, small businesses uh, that came to here of how to do business with ACDE, the city of Houston, and uh, the Small Business Administration. We are at $639 billion in terms of the values for this year. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're at $665 billion for, for the new year. We've collected 993 uh Revenues, which is thirty million one thousand six ninety two. We've had some uh, refunds that we have to adjust because of uh, some of the uh, uh, added to uh, when they had the the, the committee then the they uh, the 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 certification reduced the tax levy, and so therefore we had to give some refunds to us to a tune of two hundred three hundred seventy eight thousand. 533. And yet today, uh, we're at 99.3 versus last year at 100.3. And we took that into account in setting the calculating for the new year. In terms of our disbursements, uh, we have uh, 516 uh, disbursements, totaling 5,304,800. PCAR transactions, 483 transactions, totaling. 118,641, six transfers totaling 2,160,893 for total dispersions for the month of 7,584,334. Website, um, all our checks, uh, register, and information is on our website. Uh, in terms of uh, segment division data, CES report, uh, we have benefit variance of uh, 1,718,000 records management, which uh, I think is going to be very close to breaking even. Uh, we, it, it is uh, 30 days behind in being some of our accruals, but we are now at $407,073. Base therapy, 3,645,764. And schools of so 4,144,651. The one that is doing really ex uh, really well, and this is something that uh, we had uh, reported previously. Choice Partners has set a new record of revenues to million four hundred thousand three nineteen, of which the transfer to general fund is nine million six hundred seventy three thousand seven fifty seven. So we're a variance of three hundred and fifty five percent from budget to actual. And no budget amendments uh, at this time. Uh, foundation update, we have still equity of 447,742 in uh, cash uh, in the, with the Educational Foundation. And uh, you have a list of all the initiatives that are included there, Partners in Education, Truth for $27,000 is in the Educational Foundation. Our least revenue projects are ongoing with uh, our small business program. And uh, we have total CIP left of 6,097,792 from the 2020 um, bond uh, issuance. Uh, maintenance note of 1,550,195. And uh, PFC of 4,547,597. We have a little over 1.2 million in retaining payable that we're still waiting for a final outcome to, to accept the uh, the projects. And uh, the new uh, capital uh, projects is uh, 16200133 in terms of uh, the uh, renovation at, uh, at the uh, Irvington uh, building and it's, uh, for, for the, for the uh, fiscal year. Uh, Durotech uh, retainage is $58,072 on our uh, Urbanton project. So all of them are 99%, all are, we're just waiting to uh, release the retainage for, for those projects. 
that's the report for the month of uh, August preliminary. As I mentioned, we will come back in January with uh, with the final. What questions do you have in our financial statements before I go into the investment report? Thank you, Dr. Amesqua. Does anyone have any questions? Okay. Hi, Dr. Amesqua. How are you doing today? Hey, um, I'm curious. Can we go back to the slide with the um, choice partners information? So, we have a transfer out to general fund of nine million six hundred and seventy three thousand. Um, the benefit ratio of three hundred and fifty five percent. That's that's beautiful. I just want to call attention to that. And I want to ask you, what was the budgeted amount that we were expecting that to be? Is that aligned? Um, I, it's in the financial statements. For, I can, um, at the top of my head, I don't recall the exact number. Um, I believe it was uh, uh, 9 million. Uh, so uh, we're going to, uh, uh, give me a second, uh, I can uh, find that real quick. Sure, my question about that is, so if it was a nine million in, in the budget and the transfer out came to 9.6, do we have budget uh, adjustments oh, that we're gonna be so the, the transfer in, it was about 3.6 million in terms of the transfer in. So it's about a $6 million increase in the transfer in from, from choice. Now, keep in mind that we're still going to accrue for the rebate mm -hmm. uh, that we're going to to look at. So that's going to be probably about a million dollars there. So, so we have to it's going to probably be a net of about eight point eight point three million. I would just be interested in seeing the budget adjustments that are made as the differences in the budget come out with these transfers whenever the revenues are higher than we were expecting. So yes, the detail is in the uh, attachments. Uh, that are posted on our website. If you give me a second, I can go look it up on the on the on the website and show it on the screen for all. Only uh, I don't want to take too much time out. If that's something that you can do fast, no big deal. But I can also get it later if you need. You got it. Do you want to just come back to it later? Yes, I, I can. Uh, I can uh, um, do a snippet in a few minutes, and then I'll, I'll let you know what the budget to actually is. Okay. No worries. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, the next uh, presentation is the investment report. Oh, here it is. I saw it right here. Um, the, the the total choice partners revenues were eight point eight million. Um, in the, that we budgeted and uh, but we amended it remember that we amended that at a, I believe a month or two or two ago and so it used to be only uh, three million so we amended it uh, from uh, from from uh, from that number so it was uh, 5.8 million that that we had originally in the budget and it came in higher than than that. Thank you. This is the investment report. <clears throat> I apologize. I have a, a lot of sinuses, so I may be, I may not, uh, you may not be, uh, be able to, uh, to hear me very well, so. Uh, on the investment report, we have sixty-one million six hundred fifty thousand and seventy-seven dollars uh, for total funds, and then the PFC three hundred thirty-one thousand one fifteen. We have the information in Lone Star. We have a forty-one percent on our 
Lone Star Investment Pool, 7% in Chase, 14% in Texas Club, 19% uh, in Texas Star, and 19% in Tech Pool. Let's see, we have 75% in Tech Pool and 25% in uh, Bank of Texas. When we compare one year to the next, uh, we have an 11,436,640 or a 23% difference in the portfolio from a year ago. Our funds are basically overnight at 61,318,962. We've earned interest of 2,885,895. So this is also a contributor to our, uh, to our, uh, the number that you saw earlier in the financial, we didn't budget $3 million. We budgeted about uh, $1 million in terms of uh, interest. And so that's additional interest for, for the department, additional revenue. And in the PFC, 22309 we're earning 5.27 in our investment funds. I mean, you see a history here of the, uh, the rates. Now the Fed is looking at uh, reducing those rates uh, by 25 basis points this month, and uh, they project three other 25 basis points uh, reduction. So that means that our rates were probably going to be somewhere in the uh, 5.0 Amount right now we're earning above 525 to 541, so it'll probably come down for about uh, 25 basis points here this next month, and maybe another 50 basis points by the end of the year. That's the report for the investment report. What questions do you have at this point in time? Any questions from the board? Free to move on. Okay, thank you, Dr. Musqua. Thank you. So we'll move into our consensus action items. Does anyone have any action items to pull today? All right, seeing, seeing none, do I have a motion? Motion by Trustee Davis, seconded by Trustee Dick. Uh, any discussion? All right, all in favor? Motion passes 7 0. That's the fifth item. So after these four, okay. some other motion. Okay, we'll start with the first action item consider approval of the service agreement between IT services and IPRO Media. For the period of 10 01 2024 through 9 30 2027, in the amount not to exceed $360,000. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. A motion by Trustee Brown, seconded by Trustee Cantu. Any discussion? All in favor? All right, motion passes 7 0. Um, second item consider approval for the service agreement between IT Services and FM Systems Group LLC for the period of 10 2024 through 9 2025 for an amount not to exceed $149,490. Do I have a motion? Um, a motion by Trustee Brown, seconded by Trustee McGee. Any discussion? All right, all in favor? Motion passes 7-0. Number three, consider approval of the competitive sealed proposals method as the project delivery contract method for the purchase and installation of playground equipment. Do I have a motion? Uh, moved by Trustee Brown, seconded by Trustee Davis. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion passes 7-0. Number four, consider approval of the competitive sealed proposals method as the project delivery contract method for the purchase and installation of playground equipment. Okay, the first one was for the Laporte Head Start Campus. This one is for the Tidwell Head, Head Start Campus. So I have a motion by Trustee Brown, seconded by Trustee McGee. All in favor? All right, motion passes, 7 0. Do we have a discussion question? Oh, no, I didn't. did I call for discussion? No. There is not. I was moving on. Right yeah. there. All right, does it, you can do it. 
It's on. It's on? Okay. I just want an explanation of the difference by any chance that we don't see, even though it is sealed, just understanding how much of a difference is Laporte to Tidwell. It's the same exact uh, playground equipment. It's just at two different campuses, correct? The design is a little bit different because of the spike. That's it. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Trustee Davis. All right. And the final item, number five, consider approval of amendments to Tidwell Head Start lease agreement by KQC Investors LLC to extend the lease term through September 30th, 2039 and delegate authority to the superintendent and his designee to negotiate, finalize, and execute an amendment to the lease agreement, including an extension of the term. Do I have a motion? Uh, moved by Trustee Dick, seconded by Trustee McGee. Um, open for discussion. Uh, Trustee Cantu. If we could just get a, an explanation of the, I know the we're extending the contract term, but any changes in the term amount? Um, yes, Please. sir. The, the extension is because uh, we're asking Office of Head Start to make about a $1 million investment in the playgrounds at each site. So that requires the OHS rider. And so we're extending at the current terms. Um, and the nine year amount is uh, the increase on the rent would be $1,165,014. Yes, 3% uh, CPI at each five year renewal. Which is already in the existing lease agreement. And so this is merely just to um, extend the term and then attach that rider that that heads, Office of Head Start's requiring, which, which is declares the federal interest in the property. Any further discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor? And motion passes 7-0. All right, we have come to the end of our board meeting. We do not have executive session today. Um, so do I have a motion to adjourn? Okay, a motion by Trustee Dick, seconded by Trustee Davis. All in favor? Or nobody wants to discuss, I assume. <laughs> All right, motion passes 7-0. All right, thank you. Uh, and we adjourn at uh, 2.01 p.m.